today i will be talking about refractory dme its labeling and management uh, in our clinic all of us have seen this picture and this is uh, diabetic macular edema and this is not very difficult to uh, diagnose and treat but like uh, standard uh, treatment for dme is uh, these days intravital uh, anti vgf injections and most of the time uh, we get the response like this in upper picture you can see a lot of edema and vision loss and after injection uh, you see a sudden uh, suddenly decrease in uh, central macular thickness and proportionate increase in the vision but we are not uh, always not so lucky sometime we also get such kind of picture uh, in which uh, in patient frustrate us and uh, patient himself is unlucky and uh, all uh, our uh, anti vgf treatments uh, doesn't uh, give any uh, desired response so uh, we can uh, define refractory dme as no visible change in central macular thickness on oct after three monthly consecutive intravitreal anti vgf injections uh so uh, whenever uh, there is a suboptimum response to anti vgf injection so we need to find out the reason there are certain culprits like uh, patient uh, may be uh, having poor glycemic control and uh, serum lipid levels may be deteriorated patient may be having hypertension which is not properly controlled and even uh, deranged kidney function tests are also uh, responsible for such conditions and microalbuminuria is important condition in which uh, the dme really become recalcitrant and uh, anemia is uh, such a ignored thing and patient uh, having anemia usually have this kind of uh, refractory dme there are uh, certain anatomical cul culprits also like uh, leaky uh, aneurysm micro or macro Uh, at macula or uh, adjoining macula, and uh, uh, sometimes there are abundance of capillary non-perfusion area in the periphery, which uh, keep on secreting VGF and which are responsible for increased permeability of capillaries at macula, and keep on uh, pushing the fluid at macula and frustrate us. Same way, uh, thick and taut posterior hyoid, which is uh, very difficult to detect, and uh, Uh, this is uh, responsible for uh, holding the uh, fluid at the macula and uh, it really need to be checked for and uh, same way uh, vitro macular traction and epiretinal membrane as far as uh, poor metabolic control is con concerned it can be verified with the laboratory investigations and uh, blood sugar for blood sugar the most important and reliable marker is hba1c because fasting and pp blood glucose uh, may be uh, sometime misleading it and hba1c gives uh, real control for the last 3 months and uh, serum cholesterol and triglyceride if they are raised they keep on uh, uh, pushing the dme and along with the hard aggregates over there and it's very difficult to treat if these things are not controlled same way uh, i have seen in patient having higher uh, blood urea and serum creatinine level it's very difficult to treat uh, diabetic macular edema and uh, that will also uh, keep you busy and same way uh, urine albuminuria urea so uh, can be checked with laboratory investigation and this is very important entity and most often this is under diagnose and ignored so for all these uh, metabolic condition we need to coordinate with our physician colleague and if possible and available endocrinologist and nephrologist are the best person to handle these situations uh, most of the patient in that is group that they are having blood pressure is also any uh, systolic pressure more than 140 and diastolic pressure more than 90 is big culprit for uh, producing dme and uh, resisting our treatment our standard treatment so uh, we really uh, need to check for this and we ourselves can uh, 
treat, uh, but it's always better to coordinate with physician. And if possible, uh, we should uh, refer the patient to cardiologist. Anemia is quite common in our country, but often we uh, don't look for that. And whenever you suspect for a uh, clinically patient looking pale, you can uh, check uh, this uh, projectiva also. And then you can uh, order for laboratory investigations. Two, in, uh, two form of investigations are important. Complete blood count to check for the hemoglobin level and peripheral blood smear to uh, see the type of anemia. And uh, sometimes it also give the clue regarding the etiology also. And uh, any hemoglobin less than 10 gram percent is not desirable. It alters the hemodynamics and uh, favors the increase of DME in our patients. So whenever such situation is pre present, patient is having anemia, you yourself can also uh, supplement, give iron supplements, but it's always better to coordinate with physician and if possible, hematologist. And uh, sometimes patient uh, is going to more than one ophthalmologist, so sometime uh, we uh, ignore the things happen to the patient. Like if patient may have undergone cataract surgery recently uh, with some other ophthalmologist and he is not telling to us. So it's always uh, ask the patient for any recent surgery like cataract surgery, particularly if it's complicated. So it will add on to uh, development of DME and make it refractory. Same way glaucoma surgery, particularly trabeculectomy, can increase your DME and even uh, uh, OPD procedures like YAG capsulotomy and YAG peripheral aridotomy can also increase DME. Basically, all these things uh, give a uh, mixture of DME and CME. And it's uh, really uh, difficult to treat such combinations. And in these uh, situations, we need to add steroid in the treatment regime. It may be in any form like topical drops, local uh, in the form of posterior subtenon or subconjunctival, or you sometimes may uh, need systemic steroids also. And whenever you find a refractory DME, always go back and thoroughly examine your patient for inflammatory coexisting conditions like iritis, iridocyclitis, intermediate uveitis, and choroiditis, and Scleritis may be anterior or posterior. You have to examine the patient thoroughly. And if vitartis is present, that will keep on increasing the DME and make our conventional treatment ineffective. Sometimes a uh, patient is on uh, pro-inflammatory -infl medications because uh, patient may have glaucoma and may be on IOP lowering drugs. So all these drugs, travoprost, bimetoprost, latoprost, tefloprost, they are prostaglandin analogs and they are pro-inflammatory. So we need to look for that also in our patient. If none of these things are present in our patient, then what to do? So uh, we have certain things we uh, you can try in your clinics. Sometimes they may work. Like uh, you can increase the volume of anti-VGF. We usually give 0.05 ml. You can increase it, it up to uh, 0 0.07. It may work, but it rarely works, actually. Uh, you can increase the frequency of anti-VGF, usually uh, four weekly. You can give it three weekly. You can try that also, but uh, it, it again rarely works. Uh, what can work, actually, is change of anti-VGF. Sometimes you can switch over uh, from one anti-VGF to other. In some percentage of cases, patient may respond. What works in more number of cases is switch over to intravitreal steroid. So uh, when not responding to anti-VGF, we can switch over to intravitreal steroids. And so many options are available these days. But I always use and recommend a labeled steroid, FD approved dexamethasone. And as far as anatomical culprits are uh, concerned, so you can see in the picture, this is epiretinal membrane. And if it is present in our patient, so it will make uh, our conventional treatment ineffective and uh, hardly any anti-VGF 
for any uh, intervitreal steroid will work in this situation. Similarly, one entity is vitro macular traction. And you, as you can see in fundus photograph and FA, hardly, this is hardly detectable. But on OCT, you can see this is a significant uh, vitro macular traction. And uh, this will not let the edema go. And this will frustrate you. And this is a clear cut case for a VR surgery. And uh, one uh, forgotten thing is uh, thick and taut posterior high load. If it is present, uh, this will again make all our uh, efforts of intravitreal injections uh, useless. And ultimately, a patient need to be uh, referred for VR surgery for the removal of this thick and taut posterior high load. Same way, uh, while uh, you uh, doing the FA, you see it in detail, and sometimes these kind of micro aneurysms may present at macula, very close to FAZ, and uh, these uh, sometimes you can see these uh, micro aneurysm on OCT also, and we uh, really need to handle these leaky micro aneurysm very tactfully. So uh, we need to laser them, we need to kill them, but we need to take utter care uh, to treat only laserable aneurysm. They should be uh, should not be very close to FAZ and should not be present on macular bundle. Same way, sometimes in FA, if you see the periphery, you can uh, find a lot of cap peripheral capillary, capillary known perfusion. This is a photograph, FFA photograph captured by a wide angle FFA camera and there are a lot of CNP laser area in the periphery which kept on secreting uh, VGF and which, which keeps on uh, increasing the permeability of uh, capillaries at macula and make our uh, treatment refractory. So I will uh, summarize my presentation in these three slides. First is how to diagnose refractory DME. So uh, important is uh, you should ask the leading, co leading questions from patient regarding use of any IOP lowering eye drops, particularly prostaglandin analogs. Same way, a detailed history for recent ocular surgery or procedure should be taken from the patient. And a thorough eye examination has got its own value. You should not stick only to uh, retina and OCT and FA. You should thoroughly examine the patient right from entire segment to posterior segment to catch the culprit and laboratory investigations are very important to uh, find the things and to uh, catch the culprit and accordingly you need to treat them and uh, good if uh, your patient is refractory you should not hesitate to go for another good quality ffa to uh, look for a leaky aneurysm at macula and cnp areas same way, uh, good quality OCT can uh, solve your problem, and you have to see for thick and taut posterior hyaloid, vitromacular traction, and epiretinal membrane. And uh, how to handle your uh, refractory DME patient? Uh, first of all, you need to control the metabolic factors by yourself with patient consolation and with the help of your physician colleague. Your pressure should be uh, controlled very well. Otherwise, it will make the things worse. Same way, if a patient is using IOP lowering drug in the form of prostaglandin analog, you can switch over to uh, uh, alternate drops which are not having these side effects. And uh, if you find any coexisting ocular inflammatory condition, must treat them accordingly with the help of steroid or non steroidal anti inflammatory medicines and if uh, you find on fa any leaky microanism you need to laser that if you have the facility laser it otherwise refer to the uh, clinic where these facilities are available in the city same way uh, for uh, cnp areas you need to do prp and if you have the facility available do it otherwise don't hesitate to refer the patient to a uh, higher clinic where these facilities are available. Uh, if, uh, in some cases, I, as I uh, told, you can try changing anti-VGF and you can also try switching over to intravitreal steroid 
the labeled one particular area. And very important is when to uh, refer a refractory DME to the clinic where the facilities are available to handle them. Like uh, the, in the case of uh, leaky uh, macular aneurysm, you need to refer the patient for focal laser photocoagulation to kill the aneurysm. And same way, if patient is having uh, peripheral CNP areas, and these are the culprits, so you need to refer the patient for panretinal photocoagulation uh, where this facility is available. And same way, if you find thick and taut posterior hyaluronic membrane, uh, posterior hyaluronic, you need to refer the patient to VR surgeon where uh, this facility and the facility is available to handle this condition. And also in the case of vitromacular tra uh, traction, you should not try too much of intravitreal injection and all that. These are clear cut cases for uh, VR surgery and uh, you should refer the patient to a place where these facilities, VR surgery facilities available. Same way case of epidermal membrane will not uh, uh, be solved by uh, intravitreal anti-VGF injection alone and they need surgery for the removal and VR surgeon is required for this purpose. And you should also take care and whenever a patient is, your DME patient is associated with any vitreous hemorrhage, proliferative vitro retinopathy, VR traction or rational RD, you should not try much in those patients and simply refer the patient to the higher center where the VR facility is available because all of these conditions need surgical intervention. Now your suggestions and questions are most welcome. Thank you very much.